Okay, so today we are heading over to the Andes near Machu Picchu in Peru with my new friend, Steffi Peters. Steffi, thanks so much for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Steffi is a, you are an artist and um, a psychologist, so an intuitive artist, psychologist. And a, she originates from Belgium, and she is currently living in Waran? Waran. Waran, yes. Waran, yes. <laughs> So, and Waran is is close to Cusco and Machu Picchu, almost like in between. And it's really this, one of the most spectacular places I think anybody could ever live in the world. And you have to see it first to, to understand what I'm saying. And I've been fortunate enough to be in that area, and I definitely want to return because it was, it was such a um, incredible experience for me. Um, so, well, Steffi, yeah, thanks again for doing this, and tell us a little bit about um, you. And you know, you're you're a psychologist. You, you had you had a practice you mentioned in Belgium, and then you you had a calling to move to Peru. So um, to give us a little backstory about that and how you landed in Peru. Yes. So actually, I studied um, psychology in Belgium. And um, in my last year, I had to choose an internship. And there was an internship in Bolivia. So that was basically the first time that I went to Latin America. And I suppose that that was the moment where I kind of lost my heart a little bit to, to Latin America, right? So then the next year I went traveling and somehow I just ended up staying two months of the whole year that I was traveling by myself. I ended up two months being in Peru <laughs> for some reason. And then, well, I, so I did the trip. I, I was traveling for this whole year. And then I went back home to Belgium. You know, I started working as a psychologist. And then at some point, um, it was actually 2020, February, uh, the beginning of February. And I was sitting at the, the in, in, in my, in my, you know, on the couch in, in the apartment I was renting at the time. And it was very strange. I was just sitting there and I just had this, message coming like to my heart or like I don't know I was feeling it in my heart and I felt like I'm moving to Peru <laughs> which is one of the craziest things that had ever happened to me but the message was there and it felt like something fell into place it felt so right in a way and I was like yes why didn't I do this <laughs> sooner right but yeah so so that's that's when it all started you know I started to prepare and this and that for for you know for coming here and um, th that's basically how it went. I got the message. It felt right. So I said, okay, that means I got to do it. And then I mm -hmm. prepared. And then I think one year after that, I was here. Wow, that's that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so how long have you been there again? Uh, a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I've had that happen to me a couple times in my life where I was in the midst of just kind of confused and trying to figure out what direction to move in. And I was fortunate enough to, to um, go somewhere out of my surroundings, which helps me kind of connect more with myself and the environment. And that's when I start to get certain messages that are, beca that become very, very clear. Um, and it sounds like that's the experience you had. It was crystal clear. It made no sense, obviously. You know, sure. You know, to the mind, it's like what? But you know, it just it just felt really, really right. 
Yeah. yeah. How long do you plan on staying in Peru? You don't know. I don't know until, you know, I sit in the couch again and I feel another message, you know, go to whatever place. But right yeah. now I just feel um, good here. And, you know, yeah. I'm gonna and are, are you practicing your uh, psychology in Peru? Yes. You yes. are. I'm actually combining it even more than I was doing in Belgium. I'm combining it very much with, with art. So like the creative therapy aspect. Um, yeah, which I think is so much more fun. <laughs> okay. Really helps us go to the core. Yeah. And you do that online, I'm guessing, virtually? I do it online, but I also do it um, here. Um, you know, there's like a healing center nearby where I can, you know, go and offer my services. Or sometimes I go out with people in nature and we do it over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let me pull up a map so we can show people where you live. Um Okay, so here's the map. And all right, let me bring that out. So I'm going to bring it further out. So the region that you're in is in the, the just below Lima. It's heading east, southeast towards Cusco in Peru. And just be below Ecuador, connected to Colombia, Bolivia, Chile, just a sensational area, Brazil. And Peru has an incredible rainforest where the Amazon is located. And I spent a little time up there as well, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, so if we move in closer here, so what makes this area extraordinary? You really can't tell by this map, but how high it is. It, it It's way above sea level. So I know Cusco is over 11,000 feet above um, sea level. And typically what, what people do when they arrive to Cusco is they chew on co coca leaves for a couple of days to become acclimated because there's most um, visitors and tourists, they experience altitude sickness. And I know I did when I was there. And then some of the locals gave me some coca leaves and I chewed on those for the next two days, you know, and, um, and it took a couple of days before I acclimated and felt better. But Cusco takes you to this area called what is this? That's Aguas Calientes. Okay. And then that's the, and then from there, you move over here to where Machu Picchu is, right in this region right here. Correct? Yes. And you are currently, you are living in Urubamba, which is right here. And look yes. at those cliffs in that picture. It's spectacular. And now you're, just a bit over somewhere by Huecho? Yeah, it's a little further on the road towards Calca. You can okay. see it. Yeah, it's a little closer to there, but yeah. And it and it's and it's called Waran. Waran, yeah, that's the name. Yeah. Okay. It's Great. Small, quite small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so all right, so let's jump into what you know for the for viewers that may be interested in in um, exploring this area to possibly live there like you are. Um, there must be some kind of a visa process. Can, do, can you tell us what you know about that? Yes, yeah, so, you know, obviously if you're coming as a tourist, you know, you can stay here for three months. It's like, unless that has changed recently, but it was always like three months and you can just, you know, come and go, whatever. Um, however, if you want to stay here, um, you know, you can either also come here as a student, you know, the student visas, but the most obvious option is like a working visa, right? So you would actually need like a contract at a Peruvian company that actually, you know, offers you the contract and then you can take that to 
migraciones and do a migration office and then do the whole process. And uh, yeah, then you basically obtain a visa if all the documents are in order. And that's the work visa. That's the work visa, correct. Is that the visa that you, you obtained? Yes. yes. Okay. And so once you obtain the work visa, is there a cost to that, to submit all that, the documents and everything? Yeah, there's, there's like, I mean, there's several documents that you need, you know, this, like this, this process, and there's like a few costs um, to that, but it's not that expensive, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's doable. <laughs> okay. It's, um, okay. And, um, and now you can stay for how long with the work visa? Yes. So basically what they um, offer you is like, um, in Spanish, it's called carnet de extranjería which is basically like they give you this card that just lets them know if they, you know, they, they check on you, you know, they just see that, um, you know, you're here legally, basically. And you have that for a year. And then after a year, you have to like renew it. And I think you can, you have to renew it like three times in total. So you have like three years, basically, that you have to, you know, do this process. And then you can ask for like a longer period, um, you know, then you're sort of like set <laughs> and mm -hmm. then you have it for like a longer period without worrying about you know renewing it every year but still yeah. it's, it's quite a it's quite an okay process yeah yeah okay great great okay and then when you when you when they get there they have to find a place to live okay. um how do how do you uh, out in the middle of where you're at how do you find a place to live out there and then what are the costs of of flats out in that particular area and what do you get what do you get what are the amenities that come with a flat okay you mean where i live now or in cusco or both um do you do you have two places i don't but i i did i mean i i used to live in cusco before okay so an idea more or less of uh, what prices you know you, you, you could be looking at um but it's it's very there's a variety of flats and and houses and bungalows and whatnot so really it's like it's a big price range so to speak um but let's say that for like a comfortable flat um let's say um two to three rooms where you have everything like included uh, with the furniture and everything it would be around um let's let me tell you in dollars uh 250 i would wow. say of course everybody has a different living standard right but you know if you want to ha have like a decent and nice apartment 250 dollars would actually yeah 250 to 300 so to speak mm -hmm. um so that would be in cusco right okay um also depends on the area you know there's areas where it's obviously more expensive than others you know um and then in the valley the valley of the uh, sacred valley of the incas where i am um i would say let's say for a house house um you know with the kitchen and the living room and the um, uh, bathroom and uh, you know like a, like a bedroom um i would say 150 200 dollars 150 to 200 yeah, uh, which is like a basic house, right? There's also like much bigger houses up to $500, $600, $700, you know, obviously. Depends also on the location, right? You know, the closer you are to the center, the more expensive it becomes in general. Then again, there's also like the aspect of, you know, when you have like an amazing view, you know, you just basically look out of the window and the mountain is right there. Then they yeah. might charge you more, you know. So there's like a lot of aspects to that. Yeah, sure. So in Waran, you can you can find a place for for one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars per month. In Waran specifically, it would be a little different because um, there's a lot of expats here, and you know the living standard is a little bit different. Okay. So or more expensive, in general. Wow. Yes. Okay. Here you would look at perhaps. Five hundred dollars easily. Yeah. Oh wow. Yes. But there's also obviously smaller places and houses, but in Waran specifically, they would be a little harder to find. 
I would say, because, you know, there's more bigger houses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so the expats have discovered what, what on, and they're driving the costs up. That's basically how it works. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, the, from you, you were living in Urubamba. Yes. Are, is there a difference in cost there compared to what on? Or is it similar? Um, yeah, I think Urubama is a little bit more expensive when we're looking at, you know, the obviously like the, the big houses over here are, are more expensive, right? But like if we're looking at smaller places, I would say that Urubama is a little bit more expensive because it's also like a like more of a city. I mean, mm. it's not countryside, but it's you know, more of a city than what on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. So so in the Sacred Valley though, you can find stuff for 150, 200. Depending though, um, like what on because it's been discovered by expats, it's a little bit more costly. Uh-huh. In general. Who, now, who are the expats that are moving to Peru? Where are they coming from? Um, there's a lot of people coming from the States. Really? Yes. Definitely. Wow. People are coming from the States. Um, there's in general also French people, but I think right right here it would be more Americans, I think. Yeah, wow, I think. that's interesting to me. And are are the Americans that are there, do they stay full time or are they just doing it temporarily? Um, there's quite a bit of people who stay here for a very long time, who've been here for 10, 15 years, um, mm -hmm. lost their heart here. So, yeah. And are they typically retirees, would you say? Or are they people mm -hmm. that are like digital nomads working online and just wanting to live in that particular region of yeah, Peru? I, I, see, I see a little bit of everything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think there's also quite a bit of people who um, who have their own projects here in Peru. You know, they start like an NGO or something, you know, like very, very kind people are really like doing very, very nice things. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's also like a group of people that's retired, but uh, I think they are maybe a little bit closer to Cusco, I think. Mm -hmm. Here I see like more people who are still like very much like engaged in, in societal activities, community work and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And how and here's my big question. How many Belgians are in the Sacred Valley? <laughs> well, in my experience, not too many, but there's I, I've met a few. I've met a few. <laughs> really? Yeah, totally. So you have met some people from from your okay. Wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah. And then they get married to Peruvians. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome that's awesome okay so we were getting into um the real estate aspect um is it possible for people that move to peru to purchase real estate and if so do you know much about like the cost of real estate if people are buying land or if they're actually buying flats or houses I see quite a bit of people who buy actually buy land and then, you know, obviously start building, um, constructing, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the land comes with a house, but sometimes they just, you know, build their own house. Um, you see, yeah. So it is possible. Um, I also hear that it's not that easy. Um, there's a lot of paperwork involved. Um, obviously not impossible. Like my friend just bought her own land, so and you know they're building, so it's possible. Um, but I hear that it's good to sort of have a lawyer or someone who sort of looks at the documents, make sure that everything is in order, because you know people try stuff. <laughs> you know yeah. when they sell the land, they try stuff, and there's a lot of that going on. So it's good to be cautious. Sure. Yeah. Do you do you know what the what the going rates are for property or people building a house or even buying a house? Yeah, I, I have to be honest, I'm not sure. I also see that prices vary like very much. Um, 
and I suppose that you know when it's like um, quite cheap, it's good to be even more prudent, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, also, like the Sacred Valley is very loved. You know, many people want to live here, so sometimes prices are like quite high. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So that is, it's a really desirable area there. Absolutely. Now the Sacred Valley, that's where the Inca trail is, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's do you, so that's the, it's almost like a pilgrimage where some people, you know, I, I guess they, it takes them what three or four, sometimes okay. five days to, to walk the Inca trail mm -hmm. to Machu Picchu. Do you see them walking through your backyard? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but that would be great. <laughs> yeah, it, it's quite a it's quite an intense um, hike and uh, trail. Yeah. And you've done it? I haven't actually. No. Have, Have you walked in any parts of those trails at all, though? Have you hiked in any of those um, areas? Near, you know. Yeah, uh, but there, there's so many amazing hikes and trails over here. It's 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 amazing. It's crazy. I mean, obviously the Inca Trail is, is the most famous one, one of the most famous ones. But yeah. there's so much beauty here. Yeah, yeah, th there absolutely is. Okay, and um, so let's let's. I'm curious about um, in Waran. Okay, so the big hub. And the big the big city out there, and it's really an impressive city, is is Cusco. So, how do you how do you get to to Cusco? How do you get around? And how long how long would it take you to to get there? Right. So, um, well, I don't have a car. I don't own a car. Many people do. Lucky lucky for you. I'd love to not have a car. Okay. Well depends how you look at it but there's a lot of quite a bit of public transport so basically what i would do from what on specifically is i would go to pisac which i mean we, it, it's also on the map like go to pisac mm -hmm. and then pisac basically um i mean it's it's the same route i mean you don't go off the bus then you go to cusco right so it's all the way to pisac and then to cusco basically. okay and, yeah. and how long does that take? That takes about um, a little over an hour. About an hour. Okay. Yeah. And what's the cost of that? That's like um, seven soles, which is about a little less than $2. So it's really nothing. So $2. Them. Wow. That's yeah. expensive to get around there. <laughs> Yeah, and then the, the journey is also very it's it's very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. And so do you do you head to Cusco quite often? Uh yeah, I do actually. I do like, you know, getting out of you know the, the most quiet place on earth from time to time to to go to Cusco and have some, you know, experience the city life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that so you said there is quite a bit of transportation and that these are vans or are they buses that you get on? They're vans. There's they also vans. Buses, um, but the vans are actually most popular. The, the vans are okay. Are okay. So are there like animals that people are using for transportation? Uh, there aren't no alpacas to to get around. <laughs> no, no. I think that uh, I think don't they use like some some like donkeys or what do they call them? To, uh, to, like some for for people that are maybe having a difficulty on certain hikes. Sometimes they take animals where people can get on them because they're too exhausted. Really, maybe oh maybe the the more like touristic activities. Maybe they have some. Perhaps I'm not sure about that. To be honest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I and I now. Do you see? Do you see llamas all around where you're at? I see the beautiful picture behind you of yes. of the llamas. Was that yeah. that was taken there? Um. This is actually my friend's. Yeah. I, I'm not sure actually where she got it. Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> that could have been taken here because usually they have these, uh, you know, <laughs> earring kind of uh, <laughs> thingies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're such they're such beautiful animals. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful animals. All right, great. So, t so what do you know about um, the viewers? Are typically interested if they're going to move there um, about healthcare. I know that you you mentioned you don't know much, but what do you what have you heard for people that move there? Do, do they typically have private insurance, or are they finding a way to utilize the insurance available to them through Peru? What do you yeah. know? So sometimes, obviously, people, when they still have like their, um, you know, when they're still registered, so to speak, in their country of origin, you know, sometimes they continue to just, you know, have those um, services available to them. However, you know, here, like specifically in Peru, there's like, um, you know, you have like private healthcare, which is extremely expensive and just pretty much unaffordable <laughs> to most of the people who are living here. And then there's, you know, the not non-private healthcare, which is a little bit of a more complicated system and, you know, not always advisable um, to, to, to go there because of structural problems. Mm -hmm. um, but when people get like a job here, you know, um, they work at a company, then they do get like a health insurance, which covers like, you know, some basic um, expenses mm -hmm. yeah, of healthcare. So, so yeah. yeah. And I'm guessing that the the jobs that people that aren't from Peru obtain there are probably working for like NGOs or. Yeah, you see a lot of that, definitely. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you eat there? What kind of food do you eat? And what's the mountain food like out there? Oh, it's like, it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the um, quinoa, you know, or rice. Oh, and yeah. Those, and there's like meat and there's vegetables and, <laughs> you know, it's like a lot, but obviously people, especially people who work here and do very like physical work, they also like sort of need that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's part of the culture because there's some, because it's, there's a lot of hard work out Absolutely. there in the, in the mountains. Yeah. So the, so the typical, so going, are there, are there restaurants near you? Like, um, typical, um, Peruvian restaurants nearby. Yeah. yeah. And so what would a meal cost to, to, to go out to eat for you? Um, so, so what they offer here are like, um, they call it like menus, like menu, mm -hmm. right? So they basically, it's like a soup. Then it's like the main course. And then you also like receive like a, like a drink of some sort. So that's that's how they basically offer it, right? Mm -hmm. And you know it would be like a typical Peruvian menu, so to speak, um, would be yeah, easily just one or two dollars perhaps. It's very wow good for a meal out there. Yeah, for the whole like the soup and the main course and and everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, for people that um, have vegan diets, mm. are there um, places to eat yes. out there for them as well? There are. Um, you know, in Cusco, obviously, it's a little um, easier, you know, to get that kind of food because, you know, everything is more like, you know, close by and there's there's more tourists there than mm. here um but yes there's definitely options you just sometimes you have to like make an effort to you know to find them you know yeah. it's not always that easy sort of even for me it's it's like uh, it's a little hard to sort of filter out is this really like you know the product that i'm looking for or like is it really like strict mm -hmm. so to speak and then in the middle and so you're so you're you're quite a ways outside a major city where do you go to buy your food and um, are there like local markets nearby you? Yes, I love going to the market. <laughs> okay. So here specifically in, in Waran, um, there's like just, um, you know, like a 10 minute walk to the main road. Um, there's like a shop with organic products and there's also like, you know, vegetables and stuff like this. And then they have like every Friday morning, 
um, there's like a few um, a few women who are selling at you know there's like a like just a space like by the by the main road so you can go there like every Friday. Mm-hmm. Maran is a little bit like I said it's tiny, so I think that most people who own cars perhaps you know would would go to Urbamba for example where it's like a big market. Mm-hmm. Right, so there's like I mean it's it's just full. You can basically find everything. Okay. And the, okay, a big so when you go to these markets and you buy the what type of foods do you do you actually buy and and what kind of foods are you cooking? What kind of meals are you making for yourself? Well, uh vegan vegan meals. So, you know, no, it's just a lot of uh vegetables. Um like I love quinoa. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then there's uh yeah, lots of rice as well. They have so many kinds of um potato who is very known for for their potatoes yeah so you can find like so many kinds and yeah try it out so they also have like um corn like mm-hmm. you know, it's big and you can just <laughs> just mm-hmm. eat it like that with some cheese they have like a typical cheese it's <laughs> so, not that vegan but you know sometimes <laughs> it's nice <laughs> uh, so yeah yeah like really I would say just everything basically they sell at the market, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what is that like the most interesting thing that you found living in that part of the world in, in Peru? What what is the most interesting thing that you've discovered since being there? That you really is there one thing in particular that you really love or enjoy, or there's something that stands out for you? in that area what i like i think it's more like a cultural thing than it is actually of this area but i i love how people even when you know whatever they, they're they're experiencing like um i don't know some kind of financial issues or whatever is happening or they just argued with some someone or whatever they're still quite happy you know, they just go out and dance and they enjoy their food and they like being with each other. And it's like a, like this joy. I very much like that about people. You know, they greet each other. Um, yeah, I like that. It's very, it feels very warm to me. Mm. I, I love that about the culture, about this, this area, this sense of community. Yeah. yeah. What do you attribute that to? It's a good question. Because you're a psychologist. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that the, the sense of community here is just very strong also because um, people have been, um, are still respecting very much like the, the, the ancestral traditions, right? Like um, they also very much respect like um, plants and and you know nature and pachamama you know and they still sort of celebrate that you know like we come together and do this little ceremony or like a big ceremony and you know we just do this because we want to honor the sun (laughs) you know it's i think pretty amazing and i think that really creates like a connectedness and it just also makes people feel happy i think you know it's just it's very sincere it's very like you know if you consider mm. life as a kind of miracle, then you know everything changes. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Do you think that that's something that um, we lost in, in the West? You know, where I guess we're 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 so much more. The the society has become so complex and sophisticated that it removes the simplicity mm-hmm. out of out of life itself and and there's a lot of st- stress when there's not simplicity any longer i think and connectedness mm-hmm. you know that that's i don't know you i wonder if i wonder if that's it it makes sense to me because we're so wired in the West every, you know, 24 seven, you know, you have access to 
to, to food, to constant information. Um, you know, I almost, a lot of times when I do these, these podcasts, I, I forget to turn my phone off because I'm getting buzzed all the time by messages and, and information that's constantly coming in. And mm -hmm. then you're like, Oh, I got, I got it. Do I got to answer that right away? Do I, and you, but I would guess the, the people in those communities out there aren't concerned about any of that. It's just right. so much more simplistic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And um, I think that's also the beauty of it, you know, and you, you, Sometimes, you know, like going to the market and coming back with your abundance of food is just, that was your morning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And no, no one is wondering like, you know, oh, have we been productive enough, <laughs> you know? And sometimes like, obviously, you know, higher up in the mountains, don't even, your phone doesn't even work, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's always pros and cons, but I think like, it's also like very for me it's very liberating also like being you know um two yeah. thousand a minute <laughs> sure yeah. what city are you from in belgium i'm actually from zaventem which is very close to brussels okay so it's yeah. like is it a suburb of brussels no it's not a suburb it's actually a little bit outside of brussels but it's actually where the where the airport is so people basically a lot of people land there. It's a large population. Yeah. Fairly right. large. Yeah. Being being a quite a vill village, rather. Yes, it's quite big. Yeah. And Wuran, I would imagine there's how many people in Wuran or Urubamba? Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't know. It's a good question. I'm going to pull. Let me look. I'm curious yeah. to find out what the population is in Urubamba. Let's see. Urubamba should be a little bit more because you know it's it's becoming a bit of a city. Yeah. yeah. Population is bet it says 2700, 2700. Yeah. <laughs> if that was a while, that was actually the population was was tallied in 2011. So it's probably up to maybe maybe doubled from them from then. Yeah, I think much more even because they, they have been like really building lots of houses and uh, apartment blocks and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Good. Okay. Well, Steffi, what do you do? What what do you do for fun in that 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 um in your world? What do you do for fun out there? What do I do for fun? Well, depends on how you define fun, right? But I love to just, you know, go on walks with friends. That's fun to me. <laughs> Obviously, I also like, you know, going to like a, like a, like a live concert. When I'm in Cusco, I like to go and dance salsa, which is also quite popular here. Um, or, you know, just have drinks with people, with friends. Um, yeah, but it's also what is nice, especially about Cusco is that, um, you know, being, being like, a, like a big city, you know, you can just still go and see ruins. You know, you just take a bus and then, or you, you know, just whatever hike <laughs> up there. And so, so yeah, it has a lot, a lot to give, I feel. Yeah. Now, have you, have you um, experienced um, more than just Machu Picchu out there? As far as like the ruins? Ruins, yes. Yes, there's, there's many, many sites. There's many sites and there's some that I guess uh, when I was there, I just saw the Machu Picchu. I only visited Machu Picchu, which I, it blew me away. Right. <laughs> I think it blows everybody away. Um, right. And I, I've shared this, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate to go to, to, to experience um, the great pyramids in Cairo. Mm -hmm. And when I, and that was really, I was in awe right in Cairo but when I saw Machu Picchu <laughs> I was like whoa <laughs> I, it just I mean there was no real comparison I mean they're very different but just being being in the Andes on top of the world and looking at all of these these ravines these deep ravines and just it it is absolutely spectacular and then 
I understand that there's some other, I forget the names of them. I I was reading, I have a book on Machu Picchu that I was reading. It was a gift that somebody gave to me a while back, but um, it was talking about some other areas um, that have some spectacular ruins, quite close, quite, quite close as well. And I would think, boy, I, if I lived there, I would probably try to figure out how to hike and experience those every weekend or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, people, it's really special. Mm -hmm. Do people do that there? Do like the locals do that? Yeah. You know, the locals a little less, but still, no, I do. Know, I do know people who just like to go and hike and go up there. Right. Mm -hmm. Just, um, yeah. Or sometimes even like do a picnic or something. You know, yeah. Yeah, how really many, fun. how often have you been the Machu Picchu? I've only been once. Only once. Okay. And, um, but you're like, how far away is it again? About, you're about an hour, a little over an hour away from Machu Picchu? Yeah, it would be a little longer because then you have to like, take like a train and this and that. But yeah, I mean, it's close. It's close. Yeah. So, and then to, to get to Machu Picchu, they don't charge to get in, correct? There's no, there's no cost. To get in? To get no, in. There is a cost. Oh, there is a cost. Yeah. Oh, I didn't have I didn't have to pay a cost when I went. Really? Oh. Yeah. I snuck that... in. I snuck in the back way. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. the one. <laughs> That's the one. Which is also possible. It's totally possible. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to make sure you let, like you have a good guide, and you know. Yeah. Exactly. Give him a little extra. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's really all I I have. Um, Steffi, is there anything else that you, you could, um, that maybe we didn't cover that could be beneficial for the viewers that, uh, are considering possibly moving to Peru and, and moving to that region? Is there anything we haven't covered? Um, I think we basically covered the essence. Yeah. Um, but also maybe just, just one last thing would be, you know, there's like a lot of, uh, Facebook groups, <laughs> you know, where people can really like obtain a lot of um, valuable information. And there's also like a lot of people asking like, oh, I'm considering moving to Peru. You know, what are things that I should know and this and that. So um, that's also like, you know, they're usually called like expats in Peru or something like this, <laughs> you know, so people can also like find some information there if they would want mm. to. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Steffi Peters, thank you so much for doing this today. Thank you. It's, a, it's such a pleasure meeting you. And um, thanks for sharing all of the, this information for our viewers. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah. And you have a, a great rest of the day. And um, and I'll talk to you soon. And then I'll, I'll put all of any links that you want me to share at the end of this podcast. And uh, so that people can, can find you. Um, awesome. And uh, all right. Great. Well, have a great day. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.